Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the history of the English language one word at a time. My name is Benjamin Lewis, and make sure you subscribe so that you'll never miss a word. For this word, I reached out to the folks over at BitChute, and they recommended the word counterculture, seeing as BuzzFeed had just done an article about it and Paul Joseph Watson had responded to this article. I was looking into the word and I decided that it would be important to lay some groundwork for the word counterculture. So I proceeded and I'm now making a video on the word culture, the habits, aesthetics, behavior, and philosophy a society cultivates in its people. History and Etymology One of the legends and folk heroes of ancient Rome was a man named Lucius Quintius Cincinnatus, and he represented all of the most important virtues in Roman culture. He was a farmer, citizen, soldier. The story of Cincinnatus goes like this. After spending many years as a public servant, he retired at the end of his term and went back to his farm to settle into the most respected of all occupations in Rome, farming. At that time, any job that provided you with a wage or a salary was considered parasitical upon the farming class and was perceived as almost a form of prostitution to the Romans. After many years of farming, when Cincinnatus was getting older, a military emergency came upon Rome and the Roman consuls decided that this situation was dire enough, it called for a Roman dictator. These dictators had complete authority over the Roman government, and the only limit to their power was a six-month term limit. Cincinnatus accepted this position as dictator and swiftly resolved the military crisis. After his six-month term in the office of dictator, he once again retired willingly and gave up his post and returned to his farm to do the real work of a good Roman citizen, farming. Everything in Rome revolved around farming, everything from war to worship. Wars were only ever fought when crops weren't being planted or harvested. And one thing in particular that intertwined with farming was the state religion of Rome. The Romans had one word they used to refer to their worship and their farming practices. The word was colere, which meant to till the land. But one of its past participles was cultus from which we get the word cult, which originally meant to worship, but later on in English was applied to groups showing extreme devotion to a person or idea. Now, going back to the word we're investigating today, culture comes from a different past participle of the word, cultura, which became culture in French before it was then introduced into English. The first time the word Cultura, or culture, was used metaphorically was by Cicero in 45 BC as an agricultural metaphor for the development of a philosophical soul within a person. This metaphor was taken completely into the modern sense by the German philosopher Samuel von Pufendorf in the 1600s. Much of Pufendorf's political and cultural thought laid the groundwork for the American Revolution. Now, speaking of the American Revolution, after George Washington gave up the presidency after his second term in office, he became recognized as the American Cincinnatus. Just like Cincinnatus giving up his office as dictator, George Washington also gave up his role as President of the United States. Field research. When the folks over at BitChute recommended the word counterculture, I immediately thought that to define the word counterculture, it's going to be important to understand what the word culture 
means and what culture is. That prompted me to make this particular video. And don't worry, counterculture is coming up next. I'm only going to cover one response to my request for uh, definitions in this video, but I will mention more of them in my next one. When I asked my audience what they thought the definition of culture was, I got some very interesting answers. One that really made me think about the word itself and where it came from was from another content creator who goes by the username Justin Antitheist. He left his comment on YouTube. I'll have a link to his channel in the description. He's got some great content. I recommend you check it out. Here's his comment. I guess I would say that culture is the non-survival activities. Leisure activity, like playing, singing, painting, etc. As opposed to survival activities like hunting, gathering, chopping wood, etc. Especially that which is repeated and passed laterally among individuals, as well as passed down through time over generations, as well as the artifacts, in the sense of being art, which is fabricated, as in the Latin root for the word artifice, be it literature, architecture, etc., of a given group of humans who consider themselves to be a group based upon their sharing of those activities and artifacts in common. I'll cover his definition of counterculture in the next video. This comment came in while I was looking up the origin of the word, and I was immediately struck by his use of the word non-survival. Because the history of the word literally goes back to farming, the one thing that is most important to survival. But I think he was hitting on something true about the modern definition. When I hear the word, or when I used to hear the word culture, I would immediately think of arts, music, the non-survival things. I think something's lost by not realizing that culture affects survival and survival techniques within a culture. And in the first comprehensive dictionary of the English language, written by Samuel Johnson, he doesn't even include what I would consider the modern definition of culture. The closest he gets is in definition two, the art of improvement or melioration. I like this sense of the word, and I think it fits what a culture actually is. A culture is something that a society uses to improve its citizens, to perfect its citizens. I will throw in a contribution from one of my patrons. Here's one from Point Curation. Culture. Intentional and unintentional developments and cultivations of norms, practices, traditions, in-jokes, language, and shared understanding. I liked his use of the word cultivation in this, so I decided to use that in my definition as well. You can become a patron of mine over at patreon.com slash lexicographer. Prescription and commentary. Just like Justin mentioned in his definition, a culture is passed down from one generation to the next. This causes cultures to change, maybe slowly, maybe more quickly. But cultures aren't stationary. It's flowing with every new generation. And sometimes these streams of cultures intersect with one another. And sometimes a whole lot of them converge into a mighty river. This is what I think happened in the United States. It became a melting pot of cultures. English borrowing from Germans and Irish and even Native Americans providing the names for our states and cities. And I think it's been so successful because the United States has a culture that's always been based on freedom and liberty. That's why when people from all over the world come to this country, they're able to succeed. And when the government and those in power have tried to oppress any people for any reason, they've generally 
failed with things like the Fugitive Slave Act. And when California tried to exclude the Chinese or the southern states and their Jim Crow laws, none of these attempts by government to oppress the people have succeeded. That's because the underlying stream of our culture is freedom and liberty. The people stand behind that more than the state, the government, and those in power do, and they'll take it back every time. I'm going to go into a little bit about what I'm going to talk about next time with counterculture. I don't think we're the counterculture. I don't think this culture of freedom and liberty and individualism is the counterculture. It is the true culture of the United States. I'll discuss that more next time. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share it with your friends. Subscribe on YouTube, BitChute, and my other various social medias to participate in my field research segments. And if you'd like to support my video dictionary project, please follow the link to my Patreon below or PayPal and consider subscribing or contributing in some way. For more information, visit my website, lexikechographer.com. And until next time, keep on learning.